Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, I've got a surprise for you. We're going to forge something different today. From a railroad spike. Yeah, I love forging these things. Uh, when you come in hot and tired after a hard day's work, and, uh, you got your hat and your coat, you need to hang them up somewhere. Well, sure, you could turn that out and make a basic little hook and you can hang your coat and then you stick your hat on top of it which you have to remove your hat to get your coat so we're going to do something a little bit of a different flavor with this and we're going to make a double hook out of a railroad spike and I hope you enjoy it so let's get it in the fire get it hot and uh, we'll proceed see you in a minute now we're going to lay that head out flat for this project First thing I'm going to do is knock that back down. We'll go over that lay the edge of my anvil. Bring them corners in a little bit. All right, we laid the head out flat. Now we got to weld the cold shuts. So I'm going to get some borax on this, just a little bit, because <coughs> uh, if old Roy over at Christ Centered Iron Works, check out his channel by the way, very, very intelligent man, he sees me using too much borax, he's liable to get on my case. I'm just going to put a little bit where I need it. What borax does it acts as a flux and there are commercially available fluxes that are probably a lot better suited but most of us old timers use borax and uh, let me get this in and I'll explain to you if you've ever done any forging you probably noticed a great deal of uh, this stuff forming this is scale it's actually magnetic steel because it's contains iron steel from the material and some impurities what happens is when oxygen contacts steel at a high temperature like a forging heat it sheds off scale it's kind of like when you get a sunburn you know you you peel skin off it does that in contact with oxygen when it comes to steel it's hot um, when you add a flux such as borax to your material it shields that fault that you're trying to weld from contacting any oxygen and prevents that scale from forming. Therefore, when you get it to a welding heat, that scale is not going to prevent that from sticking. Uh, welding heat is just about to where you're fixing to burn your steel up. And uh, I've learned a little trick for these rail spikes. You bring it up to where it's almost about to sparkle just to get a few sparks out of it just about to burn your steel up and uh, it's got the borax already on it wet your anvil wet your hammer hover it above the water when you strike so you don't cool it instantly by <coughs> touching the water and pow it's gonna be loud and it's gonna make a mess but one shot I seem to stick it as long as my heat's right so that's what we're gonna do next I'll see you in a minute Alright, for those of you wearing headphones or have your volume turned way up, you might want to turn it down for a minute. It makes a very loud report when I do this.
Teeny weeny bit of a cold shot there. I don't know if you can see it. Now, I can see it anyway. So let's heat this up one more time. Weld it again. See you in a minute. Alright, it's about to come out. This time I'm not going to stop my heat to turn on the camera. You're just going to have to wait a second. Got quite a bit of spread out of that. That's a nice back plate. Pretty wide. But now what I gotta do is punch a couple of holes in it, side by side. We're gonna heat it up and we'll do that. I'm gonna clean this mess off my anvil. See you in a minute. All right, here we go. Kind of straighten it up a little bit. I didn't center punch these because I'm just gonna eyeball them. Put one right about there, one right about there. Visualize what I did there. Looks like a little set of eyeballs. Got them started good. I'm gonna go ahead and lay some of that crowning out. See, I ain't no cold shuts in that side. It looks good. It's gonna be our face side. Side I punch from first. Back in. See you in a minute. All right. Hold still.
See, I'm starting to push the slugs back upwards towards where I started punching. Next heat, I'm gonna go from the back, punch them out on the wooden block. See you in a minute. All right, ready for the fireworks? There you go. He's looking at you. Hi, I'm James's project from the Sprinkle Donut Fork. Let's get it back in there. We're gonna flip it around, heat this other end, and uh, I'll explain to you what we're gonna do to it to kind of make it uh, symmetrical. See you in a minute. All right, I drew our little uh, hook man there a warm bath, and he's taking a soak right now. So I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I laid that head flat on the spike. So now to create a double hook, I'm going to take a hot cut and split it down the middle, like so. But what that's going to do is that's going to create pieces half the width of the spike, roughly, by the whole width of the spike. We don't want that. So what I got to do is with it laying flat. I've got to draw this down to where it's twice as wide as it is thick. That way when I split it, you got two pretty much symmetrical square rods. And those will become our hooks. Because if you do it the other way, it's going to be real fussy trying to work those pieces down when they're already split. So we're going to go ahead and narrow it by flattening it down to be twice as wide as it is now thick. So. That's what's going on, we're heating it up, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, something I like to do before I go with the hot cut, I'm sure we know what the front is, is I like to take a, a regular chisel, and strike me a line in there for the hot cut to follow. cuts kind of wonky and it's easier to aim with a hand chisel it is for me anyway careful not to strike my anvil with the chisel. I'm going to deepen the line a little bit. Alright, I'm satisfied with that. Cool my poor tortured chisel off. show you what I've come up with. Still glowing in the camera, although it isn't here. Um, there. Now you can catch it. I've started me a, a bear line to follow with the hot cut. 
For those of you that haven't been with me before and we're not familiar with hot cuts, I got one that fits in the hardy hole for cutting things off on the anvil. I've got another one that's handled. Looks like a little hatchet. It's a struck tool. You notice the stick sticks through. Uh, there's no kind of binding in it. You know, there's no wedge and pin and all that good stuff. So it'll loosen up time to time when you're using it. So you take a wooden mallet and strike the handle. Tightens it right back up. So this is what we're going to use to cut it. See you in a minute. I don't know if you noticed the mistake, but I did. Before I get carried away hot cutting it, we have to make it twice as wide as it is tall. That's what we need to do now. That little chisel line, well, if it stays, it stays. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Either way, that's the next step before we cut this thing in two. Because it's going to be real hard to flatten it out and get it right if we split it first. So hey, when you're trying to explain things sometimes, you slip up a little. At least I caught it. See you in a minute. Alright, here we go. I ain't moving much. Come here, Molly. Molly. Moving. We're getting somewhere. I <laughs> look a little line is staying too. I'll keep going from this side. Maybe it'll stay all the way. If I can straighten the equation. <laughs> All else fails, use a bigger hammer. That scale wiped off your handle. Alright, so let's measure this and we'll see what we got. I mean, it's a coat hook, it's not super critical, but I think that pretty much anything you do should be taken seriously. So let's measure. Got about three quarters of an inch wide. Got about three-eighths of an inch thick. That's ideal. That should make some pretty close tolerance squares. Of course the hot cut's going to displace material a little bit slanted but it's going to be pretty good I think. If it didn't we'll always think it should have been. See you in a minute. Let's try to split it or get started splitting it anyway. accurate you are the less you have to fidget the less heat you lose that tickled uh -huh. still found my line
ain't gonna push it. There ain't no telling how old that handle is in that hot cut. I'm expecting to have to replace it any day. Let's get it hot. We'll see you in a minute. All right. Get it on the table. See if I can bust my hot cut. Yeah, I know that wasn't a wood mallet. Okay, it's about to come out from under that hole fast. ahead and straighten the equation a little bit. Fairly deep cut. I may get this in another heat or two. I'll show you where we're going with this. Pretty nice deep gouge. I'd say it's well over halfway through. See you in a minute. Good heat. Cool that a little bit. Still just sharp as it was. Take care of your tools, they take care of you. That's got to be 90% split. Now, if you have uh, tools that'll make this easier for you, such as a bandsaw, an angle grinder, or other objects that will cut through steel. I suggest using them but we're assuming you have none of that look at that little valley going down through there we about cut through what I do is I'll cut until I see dark spots starting to appear under my cut which is about as close as I want to get to my anvil face and then I'll flip it over and try to finish the cut from the other side and uh, try to get a visual on where I'm starting. Just go by eye. See you in a minute. Oh, almost forgot to let you see it.
it through without damaging my angle. It would seem so. Let me flip it over. Look at the anvil. <laughs> it didn't touch it, but it started splitting this. Go ahead and walk that notch on out. Kind of sprung one way. It's alright. See what we're looking at. Split. All right. There's a lot of rag on there, so I'm gonna heat it up and I'm gonna get it in the uh, device. We're gonna take care of some of that. I probably ought to spread this so I can access that sharp edge. So, I don't want to do that at this heat. I'll get it hot and we'll see you in a minute. Alright, here we go. <coughs> see if we can't uh, spread that out a little bit. See any need to use the hot cut? You got to spread out enough to get to all the rag, leaving part of a notch there. Ain't gonna hurt a darn thing. So we'll get it hot and proceed from here. See you in a minute. All right, here we go. Nope. We're gonna do this the old-fashioned way. I can't say that there's any historical record of hot rasping, but it darn sure does the job.
smooth that up with the smoother side. I'll try to let you see. Alright, that's enough of that. I'm not going to show you the other side because you just seen exactly what I did. But I'm going to show you what I did. Here's what we had before. See that hard edge from being cut? Here's the back of it. Now look how I rasped that hard edge off. Knocked it down nice. So that's forgeable. I'm going to get it in there, do this again, and I'll get back with you when all that's done. See you in a minute. Or two. Alright, let's pull it out. You use a little ball peen. It's accurate. It does a good job. Knock that edge down. at this point is just trying to knock the edges down it's going to twist a little bit but that actually doesn't look bad get a free twist with no bending wrench. Yay. You can straighten that if you want to, but I don't want to. I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, that ain't too bad. A little twisty. Do that to the other one. See you in a minute. Alright. Let's draw these ends down. Alright, you see we're getting her down to a point. I'm going to do that to both of these, and then we're going to curl them over. See you in a minute. Alright, here comes the curl. Over the edge of the anvil. Tap her down a little bit. Flip it over, and walk it back towards yourself.
close that little end up like that. See? That's pretty. Let's do it to the other side, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, before we do that, I want to let you know something. This is your face side you've chosen. The side you hot cut from. Leaving that little slit there. Make sure your curl goes toward the back. Because when you flip it up, your curl will be facing toward the front. Alright, see you in a minute. Alright, we got both our hooks curled towards the back. We're going to roll one over. First thing we do is curl it in like that. Try to get the other one to match. See you in a minute. Alright, got them both bent in toward the center. Got them curved about the same. Now what we got to do, we got to heat the rounded area at the bottoms of these and twist that out straight on each side to create a suitable hanger. So I'm going to heat one of these and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'll do the other one and we'll look at it when I'm done. See you in a minute. Alright, here's what we got. Here's what we're going to do to it. Oh, man. Figure out a better way to hold on to this. Hold on. Here's a better way to hold on to this. Bent that one out. Let's see you in a minute. Alright, let's sign off on this thing. It's managed to satisfy me to the point where I'll put my touch mark on it. Do not put your touch mark on anything that you're not happy with. There it is. I mean, you put your touch mark on what you want. I'm just of the mind that I'm not going to put my name on anything that I deem inferior. Now let's quench her off. Let's do it in some oil. One second. All right. Oil quench. All right, down in the slack tub. Filthy rag. Filthy rag. clean this up we're gonna look at it see you in a minute all right we're done 
so here's what we started with a real spike exactly like this one same weight same shape and now we have a nice little coat hook fairly symmetrical no electric tools were used you saw the whole thing and uh, now I'm going to give you an image you'll never forget boxing octopus <laughs> well here's our boxing octopus hook and uh, it will gladly hold your garments well that's all I've got for this evening I hope you enjoyed our little project and uh, until next time, bye.